Hi guys and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and if you want to see more. Coming up in this episode, 199 days out from the Rugby League World Cup and the hosts, organisers, are out in Australia. Leeds Rhino CEO makes a plea to its fans. And the Challenge Cup quarterfinal draws. TV companies choose their games. So we'll begin with a quick look into Leeds Rhinos as they've not had the best start to the season. And the last couple of weeks I've seen them sink to lows that they wouldn't have thought would have happened at the beginning of the year. Despite being very, very popular with TV companies showing them every single week, no matter which channel it is, um, and also attendance is getting a reasonable amount every single game, the formula for the Rhinos hasn't been the best for this start of the season. In the past week, they have let Richard Agar go uh, from the coaching position in a mutual termination but he's expected to come back in the future in a different role this is not in our small parts due to the fact that Leeds are currently 10th in the st standings equal on points with Castleford Tigers and Toulouse Olympic with only one win from their six games then over this weekend, Castleford Tigers routed Leeds Rhinos at Headingley, 40 points to 16 in what was temporary coach is Jamie Jones Buchanan's first game in charge. But that wasn't the most of it, as only a crowd of 5,112 turned up to the reasonably priced game are one of the biggest clubs in the country. The murmurings can be whole heard all over social media, in the press, on the radio, all about uh, the Leeds Rhinos precarious position at this point and also got being dumped out of the cup against one of the teams that are in a much more of a transition bit, um, status than what Leeds are. This has been taken to heed by the management up at Leeds Rhinos as Gary Everington, the CEO of Leeds Rhinos, has come out with a statement via the Leeds Rhinos website about the situation, asking for the fans to be patient with them. In the statement, it goes on to say, on behalf of the Leeds Rhinos management and board, I felt it important I communicate with the supporters following the bitter disappointment of our exit from the Challenge Cup on Saturday, compounded by our poor start to the season. Hetherington State started. Firstly, I would like to say that these performances are clearly unacceptable and fall far below the standards this proud club has set. I think perhaps our recent raw uh, feels, run feels were so raw because of the hope and optimism we all had at the start of the season that we were ready to mount a challenge at the top of the table again. When we think back to the pre-season feeling, we felt we had established a squad with the right blend of youth and experience with as much strength in depth as possible within the constraints of the salary cap. We have lost players to two injury as every team in Super League does, but also cause problems for ourselves with our own discipline. As our long-time supporters will know, we have faced adversity like this at times before, and the lessons from those experiences are invaluable. As we look to plot a course to make uh, to better times ahead, the squad is are clearly low on confidence at the present and first the first half against Castleford showed that as we allowed our heads to drop and after conceding the early tries the job of the of Jamie Jones Buchanan and the rest of our performance department is to turn that around in the short term I still believe that this group of players are capable and talented as we all thought at the start of the year but the key now is to start showing that with our performances. 
Long term, we find ourselves in a ro the need of a he new head coach. At Leeds, that appointment carries many unique opportunities and the ideal candidate will offer both coaching expertise, but perhaps as importantly, be a leader with the vision of how this team will evolve and become the champion side we know it can be. I believe this appointment is important as my decision to bring Tony Smith back in 2003. In contract, back then, we were challenging for honours on all fronts, but we needed to go to the next level with a new appointment. To that end, we've begun an exhaustive search both home and abroad, and this weekend I will travel to Australia to meet a number of potential candidates, to speak to them in person, and further advance our search for our new head coach. We have worked hard in recent years to develop and secure a group of talented young players and a, this appointment will be crucial in allowing them to fulfil their potential. I fully understand the frustration and disappointment that our supporters are feeling at present. We have dedicated the last 25 years to re-establishing the club as a force for the game. I share those frustrations but... I would ask you all to give Jamie and the team your support as we aim to get ourselves back on our feet and we can start to move forward in the coming weeks. Thanks for all your support, Gary Hetherington. In any other sport, when a CEO comes out with a statement like this, it usually means someone's going to get fired, usually a head coach or a manager. But they have no head coach or manager. And I think he's feeling the pit pinch a little bit more as they were hoping that the bounce that they could get from a new boss could catapult them a little bit for, to make them more feasible to the next person. I'm looking at that lead squad and while there is undoubted talent in that squad they still have to rely on Tom Briscoe, who is a who was a great player, still has a great role in the game, and at some, to some extent, Richie Mallis. They converted him to a fullback last year, and now he's looking a little bit injured at the moment. So, don't know if they're looking to the future. Why are those two players still making a predominant part of this team? Be interesting to see which way they go forward and see what leeway the new man has. Because if the new man decides the squad isn't good enough to challenge, then there's going to be changes made. But will he be allowed to make the changes? We won't hear from Richard Agar about the situation at the club. We can all speculate like anything because he's going to go back into the club at some role. Which might be a little bit of why this is going on because he knows he's got a job for life but Jamie Jones Buchanan has as well sometimes they say don't go back legacies can be smashed if you fail at the coaching after being such a success successful um, player coach at, at, at the club or as part of a unit um, there's so many to look at. Dennis Betts, unfortunately, didn't have the best of times at Wigan. Just to give one example. That's a coach, that is. And then there was a succession of coaches changes after that. They nearly went down Wigan. I'd like to see where Leeds are next in the next three weeks. If they got someone in charge, or if there's just trying to muscle the way through this barren period for performances, results and also skill to be any good in the next season. We'll have to wait and see. However, since the quarter-final draw was made for the Betfred Challenge Cup, we've been waiting to see over the last couple of days, uh, who has got what type on which TV network? And it looks like only two TV companies will 
be showing the four ties. Could have had a third, but hey ho. Um, give them the biggest platform to show on. So, first of all, let's remind ourselves with the draws. Wakefield Trinity are at home against Wigan Warriors, while Hall KR host Castle for Tigers. Huddersfield Giants will host Hull FC, while Catalan's Dragons welcome St. Helens to France. So it looks like that there was only two TV companies that needed to be using this, as Premier Sports and BBC have chosen their two games each. Premier Sports make the trip to Craven Park, as you see in the background, um, on the 8th of April. And the game is Friday night, so it's live from 7.45pm. And then they go in the evening again on the Saturday, the 9th of April, from 5pm, with Huddersfield versus Hull. BBC, however, look like that they've got the glamour ties. As on Saturday 9th of April 2022, they have got Catalan's Dragons versus St. Helens on BBC One. While on Sunday the 10th, they have Wakefield Trinity versus Wigan Warriors on BBC Two. Both 2.30 kickoffs in the UK. No matter what happens in these games, there is going to be a lot of for the audience to enjoy as Wakefield have been throwing the ball bound with Gay Abandon in the cup games and Wigan have got some strike players just to name the Saturday's game. St. Helens, irrepressible. It may have slipped up against Toulouse recently, but I don't think that'll happen again. If they are, if they do, then there's something not quite right at Saints otherwise, but they're too professional to worry about it. The only team that could probably cause them trouble in the cup is Catalan's Dragons. The French side have been a bit sore since they have uh, got beaten the opening game of the season in the chat in the Super League against St. Helens at St. Helens, but now have home field advantage and a loud French crowd. Plus, TV audiences in France and the UK on terrestrial TV. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. It's going to be some good games. The chief executive of the Rugby League World Cup will spend a fortnight in Australia during the international window in June to speak to and ally any lingering concerns about the tournament among NRL clubs. The reluctance of the NRL clubs to release players when COVID-19 rates were high forced the 16-nation competition postponements from 2021 to later this year. While speaking in an event in Manchester, Rugby League World Cup 2021 boss John Dutton said, it's really important to remember that the players are not centrally contract. This isn't rugby union or cricket, so I'm going to meet every NRL chief exec, he said on Monday. I will meet all the nations that are out there and I'm going to meet the NRL to get their get out there and talk about our journey, build relationships and make sure everyone is prepared. A lot of people associated with the likes of Italy, Lebanon and Greece are based in New South Wales. So it's important from that perspective. Dutton, who was speaking at an event in that marked the 200 days to the opening of the games, said the officials were better placed to organise a successful World Cup than they were like this time last year. The delay meant the organisation lost some key personnel and was forced to incur costs from more ticket refunds than anticipated, but Dutton says the gaps have been filled and he is confident fans will rebook post-pandemic. Sales have topped 50% for both the opening game between England and Samoa at Newcastle's St. James's Park on October the 15th and the finals doubleheader at Old Trafford on November the 19th. And Dutton is convinced that they will be among a host of sellouts 
we are definitely in a better position than this time last year, he said. I remember 200 days before the scheduled start of the World Cup, we were surrounded by uncertainty. I would say now that there's a 10% uncertainty, but 90% positivity. COVID still exists, so we can't be complacent, but people are coming to enjoy the sport. And there have been great crowds across Super League in the first six weeks, in the championship and across every other sport. Feels different. We've got more resources. We've got more time. And to commemorate this, the 200 day milestone, organizers are taking all three trophies on a 48 hour tour of the 18 old towns and cities, starting in Newcastle on Tuesday morning and finishing at Arsenal's Emirates Stadium on Wednesday evening. And that's it for another episode ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching please remember to like subscribe and also share this video worldwide so that we can get the updates for all rugby league events over the next few weeks months years and also to get the word out for rugby league please share 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 the hell out of these videos so that we can get the word out about this channel as well so tell me what your thoughts are on today's video um there were three stories in today Leeds Rhinos taking that step of making a public statement from the board members. That's a big one to t that's a big one to stomach for the entire club. I take it. Uh, what about um, the Rugby League World Cup committee going out to Australia? Is that positive moves? Do you think it'll be received properly, or do you think Australians don't really care unless it's on their soil? which they can benefit and see. And finally, the last story of today. Well, what can you say? The Pet Bread Challenge Cup having those two channels competing to show the two games, but the four games. We're getting close to the nut cutting time when it comes to the finals. May the 28th. I'm still considering whether or not I should go. It'll be a fun event no matter who it is. And it'll be a stadium that I've never been to be before. I've been to the old one. I can do a comparison. Hopefully I get, won't get the ear talked off by a Tottenham fan. But hopefully I'll be saved by one in a pub like last time. That's a story for another time. But anyway. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. I will say thank you very much for watching. Also, please continue to be safe. I wish you all the best. And I'll see you in the next episode.